All right, guys, this is what we got. You saw me introduce the chassis in a previous video. I picked this up off of Amazon. The links to all this will be in the description. Most of it came from Amazon. There are a few things that came from AliExpress, such as the body that we're gonna be running. I already trimmed it down a little bit, but it's gonna get cut a lot more. Uh, and everything else was from Amazon, I believe, except for the portal axles that I picked up. These are the axial capper style portals. They are plastic housing because I wanted everything on this build to be lightweight. So uh, I went with the F9 Curry style. In case you're wondering, these are an 8 and 30 ring and pinion, which is stock for axial. And the portals are a 12 and a 23. So these are the axles we're going to be running. I like these because the pumpkin is real low. Some of them you see the pumpkin sticks way down just as far as your portal does. So I don't understand the point of that. It kind of takes away from the whole reason you're running portals. But these have a nice slim profile. So that's what we're going with for axles. We have the rest of our pieces that came with the chassis, the transmission plate, the transmission. I took it apart, put some grease in there. Uh, it is metal gear as well. Screws, servo mounts, side plates. I'm running the J Concepts Ruptures. Everybody seems to want these right now uh, to stay with the lightweight. Again, I'm just going with these plastic beadlocks for now. 2660 Traxxas Big Bore Shocks. Same as on the Endrora Crawler, only those are 2661. Again, we'll be running the Mini T Springs. And I picked up the Traxxas 8361 Shock Caps, which have the metal ball ends instead of the plastic ones that come with the kit. Cut the length drive shafts. These should work for any length we need. You see they have little notches on them and you just cut them to the length that you need. Axle mount servo bracket. This came with a chassis mounted servo, but I'm gonna go with a four link just like the Enjora build and do a chassis or a uh, axle mounted servo. And I picked up the high clearance links. It's got the real stubby ones up front, the two bent lowers for the rear and the two straight uppers for the top. So I picked those up. And last but not least, Hobby Wing Fusion 1200 KV all in one motor. Um, this is my first one, so we'll try it out and see. I got that on sale, I believe, for Black Friday, and I want to say it was $63, so that's pretty cheap. If you have uh, a Fusion, you need a program card. If you have any other Hobby Wing Fusion products like the 1080C or anything like that, the cards will all work. They're all the same. The only difference is the print on the front. The buttons do the same thing. You just have to look up Hobby Wing Fusion Program Card and number 1, 2, 3 through 13 or whatever it is. The description will be different, but the buttons will work the same. So you just have to look up number 1 does this. These are the values I want. You just don't use the numbers that are on this because this is specific for the 1080. But this card will work. You can program it. You just need the right information for the number that you're programming. So other than that, I think we got everything, guys. Uh, the only thing not on the table is a servo. I know I have one around here somewhere. I just don't know where it is. But I'm going to get this guy put together, see how it sits, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, guys. Well, here's what I ended up with. Um, there's still a lot of adjusting to do, but we got everything mounted. Looks like we're going to have pretty decent steering angle. Uh, we can always trim up front here a little bit where, you know, it has stock bump stops and things like that. That's pretty good angle that way. We can maybe work a little more this way. Um, got the front servo mount installed. I do not have the drive shafts on yet just because you can see how short that one's gonna be. And I really don't wanna cut this long drive shaft down to that. But uh, we'll definitely work for the rear. So that will be perfect for the rear. Um, everything went together great. Uh, I have a little bit of a wiggle just because of some space between the rear shocks here. 
I need to put some shims in there and these links are still kind of loose so as far as a initial mock-up everything went together great um, we just got to tighten everything up and get everything situated I'm not sure exactly if that's where my shocks and links are going to stay. You can see they're pretty much parallel. As far as pinion angles, my pinion angles look good. Um, I'm really, really happy with the setup. I'm sure we'll have pretty good flex with everything, just like the Enjora. This one is just a tad shorter than the Enjora wheelbase, so we'll see how that works out. Uh, as far as servo, I'll be adding that in the next video, and then we're going to figure out placement of the ESC and the battery. I'm thinking the battery will probably just go up front right here, maybe on the servo, and we'll be trimming the cab down to fit. Looks like the bumper is going to clear, and we'll probably end up cutting... I don't know if I'm going to cut the fenders all the way off or leave them and try. We'll, we'll play with that. But that's kind of how it's going to look. Let me get the phone off the stand and get you some lower angles. And uh, show you a little more what the ride height is going to be. Or at least what it is right now. See our links are nice and parallel with our skid we do have the high clearance links in the back this is all going to get adjusted but I think it sits pretty nice it's about the same height as the Enjora crawler only this one is slightly shorter wheelbase but I've still got some playing to do with the length of the links and uh, things like that but here is our clearance you can see we're almost fully compressed there's our ground clearance Let's see if I can scoot this guy over here's the ground clearance on this one as opposed to the ground clearance on that one don't get me wrong I love this Enjora crawler it does amazing this is just a different setup but look how much clearance you have now with that clearance, you pay a price on adding everything higher up, so you're gonna have to work on your side hill and your top heaviness. But my plans are to keep this super light, so that doesn't affect us too much. The only thing going up any further will be the cab, and uh, all we have left is the battery and the servo. So, she's together, this is the end of part one. Part two, we'll mount the servo, figure out the battery location, get the body trimmed and get it on, and hopefully go for our first test run. Yeah, we'll get our, our drive shafts on as well. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. See you in part two.